Welcome guys, this is Wolfire Studios here with another devlog and this time I just wanted to make it a quick one and improvise and tell you guys what all I've done since the last time. If you guys remember in the last devlog I was talking about improving the crouching and sprinting logic and also fixing the bug that was causing me some issues, you know, not to sprint and, and change states from crouching and sprinting. So this is the video about that and let's just see what I did. So first of all, let me just show you guys quickly the improved code of crouching and sprinting. So as you can see, I made a custom event and which is using this variable is crouching and it's checking that if we are not crouching, then okay, we want to crouch. And if we are crouching, then we don't want to crouch. And it's just this custom event is calling this code to switch the variables on and off and call this, call these two functions, the crouch and uncrouch. What these will do they will go to the character movement and tell the character movement component that hey this is my max crouch speed where is it yeah this is my max walk speed crouched which is 150 in our case and these functions will tell the character movement and okay i want to use this speed now and i don't want to use this speed now and also these functions will tell the character component that uh, you should you know modify my capsule like if you are crouching your capsule will shrink okay those of you who don't know about this, this is the capsule. This is your collision capsule, physics capsule, whatever you want to say. And it needs to shrink if you're crouching because, you know, your player is now shrinking. So that these two functions will take care of that. And now this is the sprint logic. Nothing. We are just checking that if we are crouching, then we don't want to crouch. That is, we want to disable crouch and then we want to enable sprint. And if we are not crouching, then we directly want to sprint. And when we release the key, we will stop sprinting and it's the exact same custom event doing the exact same stuff, setting variables on and off and that's all. Now let's move to the aim offset. This is the aim offset file that I made and it is using pitch and yaw as the two axes. The pitch is the Z axis. If you guys are aware of it, as you can see, Z axis. Yeah, sorry, Z axis like looking up and down and your is your y axis looking left and right we're not covering x because x is roll and it will roll the body like here and like in this this format this counter counterclockwise or clockwise from this aspect so we don't want to do that like we don't want to do this the roll one we just deal with your and pitch it's a bit confusing to imagine it, I know, but if you guys are really curious for it, I can make another video explaining what your pitch and roll is and what, they, what do they perform in first person shooters and all, but that's for another day. And now let's just move on on how I implemented this aim offset blend space in my blueprint. First of all, this is the event graph and I've removed the cast to character because really there was no need for it. It was working just fine without it and we are saving performance. And I'm using again this try get pawn owner to get the velocity and all. You guys remember this from the last blueprint, right? Uh, last devlog. This is the converted functions. If you guys remember, I was storing the movement variables. So here are the movement variables, the exact same code from the previous devlog. So do check it out if you guys are confused or wondering how is this here. And now moving back to the event graph. This is the second function I made storing aim offset variables. And it is here, as you can see. What I'm doing is, uh, let me just explain it quickly. I'm using the control rotation and the actor rotation here and getting a delta. Control rotation is how much your camera or your mouse or your gamepad has moved and actor is how much your actor has moved, the root component. Uh, if Since you know right now it was not happening, this there was no movement. So this rotation is technically zero and this is how much your mouse has moved. So 15, let's, let's say it is 15. So 15 minus zero will be 15. And we are interpolating are interp to interpolating between 15 and zero why zero because like right now nothing has been done like these variables are zero by default as you can see zero so we are interpolating between zero and like example value 15 using this interp speed and the delta time of world you can increase or decrease this interp speed it's it's all on you like higher the interp speed and the faster will be the movement. I found that uh, five and seven people were using five and seven, but I found 10 to 12 will be like, you know, adequate for me. And even 20 is adequate for me because I don't want it to be super slow. I want it to be, you know, fast and swift in its movement. 
and then we are breaking that rotator and just using y and z the pitch and the yaw and clamping them why are we clamping them because well if you guys remember our aim offset is using 90 and minus 90 so we don't want the values to exceed these values and we are clamping them and then we are setting them this is a sort of an additive you know continuous workflow like when you will move ahead suppose you move 15 degrees and this calculation will make our arms move 15 degrees and now you want to move another 10 degrees so it will add up on top of it okay pitch and you will be using the previous values and our delta will be the new value i hope you're getting the point right like the pitch and you will only move the required amount of degrees they won't start from zero they won't hitch or they won't you know reset their values so to speak how am i using this well if you guys remember this is our locomotion state machine if you'll go back to the anim graph here it is locomotion and this is the output and in between them we have this our aim offset iron sight this thing and it's blending in between them like using this as the base pose and then offsetting it like using the yaw and pitch and then giving us the output pose that's all and locomotion was updated like I am, i'm not using the reverse check i'm just using one-sided check which is again helping me not to break the code and you know not to make it look buggy and such like only if you are pressing c for crouching and you want to run you'll press shift so it will break that stance and it will go into sh like running but you don't want to do the opposite i'm not putting any sliding mechanic right now so this code is just fine and the rest of the conditions are just the same that's all i guess that's that's all guys yeah i hope it's not too long let me just show you how it works if i press play as you can see this is the camera and arms now if i'll move my arms i mean i move my camera my arms will move simple and this speed of movement the arms are following my camera right if the interpolation was like around 10 or 8 it will be slow and if it is 30 35 it will be super fast and if you'll i guess make it 50 it will just reach before you will even look up so it's it's crazy it's like sensitivity of the arms following your camera and this is like me walking a player walking and if i press c it is crouching and as you can see in the uh, left side of the corner the debugging values now it's 150 it's not 300 as last time so yeah i fixed it the crouch speed is being implemented and that's all if i press shift the speed will be 600 and i can run now as you can see and i can press c again and i'll change to crouch which is fine like it's strict it's like a hard change but it's okay and another thing i need to fix guys is this um yeah as you can see the arms are now clipping inside my thighs which is senseless i'll fix it down the line but before that i guess i'll implement the uh, turn in place and then i'll implement the shooting logic and then i'll look at this clipping thing i mean it's not game breaking but it's immersion breaking so i'll fix it down the line that's it guys that's it that's all i have to say and yeah i'll look upon what to do next uh maybe turn in place and maybe looking at how to create the weapons of all the main characters of my series like i guess i'll create them on my own just like i created this m4 using blender and if i do that i'll hopefully record it so yeah that's it guys see you in the next one guys cheers take care